back with another one from and we back with power book two okay season four episode five mid-season finale called ego death and we back with another one and that look i ain't gonna waste no time getting into it man but first you hit that like button you hit that subscribe button Share it with a friend. Share it with a friend. Because, look, we got to get into this. My man to read right off the jump, man. My man. He got them draws, didn't he? He smashed Norma, daughter boy. He smashed her six ways in the sun. He smashed her so hard, he woke up, he didn't know where he was at. He was laid out on the floor. Now, that's a good smash session right there, ain't it? You just laid out on the floor. I don't know. It might be a good thing, but honestly speaking, this is the last thing that Tariq need. Tariq already got enough issues dealing with these women out here, so I don't know. Adding her into the mix, and it's a dangerous, I don't know. We'll see later on. It kind of uh, adding her daughter into the mix kind of help him, but we'll see how that go, though, man. But, br- Braden, 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 man. Dude. If we've seen it once, we've seen it a thousand times. Braden is co- a complete liability. I mean, he come through sometime, but Braden know he a liability. So here we go. We got Braden laid up with his little girl now. Okay. And now we find out she got sickle cell. So she say the sickle cell is why she is. She try to use that as an excuse for her being an addict. Okay. And she snorts her some more cocaine or whatever. Look. Look. I know people with sickle cell. And. They go through that. They have their challenges, man. But having sickle cell anemia ain't no excuse to be a dope fiend. Okay, now, Braden fall for that mess. You know, with his lame self, he fall for it. But come on, man. She a dope fiend. Don't try to put that on sickle cell anemia. Don't try to do that, man. But meanwhile... Meanwhile, at the dysfunctional Tejada family house, we got a dinner going on, right? With uh, Monet at the Tejada family compound. Okay, Monet, she trying to get the old group, the old family back together again. And they ain't having it, man. Of course, you know, as usual, Kane, well, I like to call him Sonny from the Godfather. He comes in there and he throws his fit. And then after Kane leaves, Drew does his thing where he wants to throw his fit. Uh, and uh, then he leaves. He sash- he sashays out of there and leaves as usual. That's what Drew does. And Diana talks with her mom some more and does her little thing. You know how they do. But moving on from there, here in Norma, when Norma caught the little cocaine bag in her daughter's stuff, that that scene Norma does where she lectures her daughter about how drugs ruin people's life and all that. That got to be the most hypocritical moment. That's got to be one of the biggest hypocritical moments in Power Book 2 history for sure. Maybe even in Power Universe history. But, uh, not Universe. Yeah, Power Universe history, but... They got to be one of the biggest hypocritical. I mean, to hear her have the audacity to sit and tell her mama, I mean, tell her daughter, don't take these drugs. These drugs are bad. While she's running a whole fat drug empire. That was just crazy to me, man. You know? But, uh... From there, you know, Norma, she thinks she's on top of her game. I think Norma met her match with Tariq. Because Norma sashays in there with her little uh, goon, Kane, tagging along. 
Norma sashays into Tariq's party, and to and Norma snatch sat. Norma comes to the party like this. Aha, aha, Tariq, I got gotcha. you. And then Tariq turns around and pulls Norma's daughter in and say, Aha, aha, I got you more, Norma, because she pulls to Norma's daughter in there to save the day. That dog on Tariq, he's always a step ahead, just like his daddy goes, ain't it? That Tariq, boy, I give it I give him that. And then of course, you know, after he gets Norma off his back, that psychopath Norma's a psychopath too. She a female psychopath for the same uh, uh, at that. I get in her to her later. But he gets rid of that psychopath Norma and her daughter and Kane, her little lap dog. And he goes in the back of the club, and Braden got his goofy, goofy ass back there snorting some powder. If that boy ain't a liability, I don't know what it is. Now, Tariq is up in there talking to Norma. Tariq is about to get killed, executed by Norma. And what is Braden doing? He backstage with his little goofy little girlfriend, with his dope fiend girlfriend, snorting powder. Hey, bro, come on now, dog. Come on, man. I mean, what the hell, bro? Like, this is what I'm talking about. Braden is just such a liability. Tariq go off on him just as justifiably so. I'm with Tariq on that. He went off on Braden Goofy Butt, man. You know what I'm saying? And then Tariq stole him off. And then his goofy little girlfriend come, and she come up to don't worry about it, Braden. Let's do some more cocaine. And and guess okay, Braden. I trust you, Braden. And guess why I put acid in Tariq drink? She spiked Tariq drink with acid. Then Braden gotta run and check on Tariq and Tariq on an acid trip. I guess he saw himself as his dad or something. In the comments, tell me what that what you think that whole acid trip was about. Was Tariq like seeing his future? Medical uh, what like what was that about? What was that about? Why was Tariq uh like what is that uh, Tariq was he having like a battle within him? That's what it was, I think. He was having a battle within himself because he saw his father, he saw ghosts in him. And I think he was coming to grips with that he is ghost and ghost is him. Probably help me in the comments. Help me in the comment. Help me figure that out. But the most important thing about all that I want to know. Why do you think Braden, when Tariq came out of that acid trip, why didn't Braden tell Tariq that his girlfriend spiked his drink? Why did he lie to Tariq like he didn't know who spiked his drink? We gonna see that. That might come back. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. That might come back. I don't know. Now, uh, Now, remember this when we went to this in Kane versus Zion. I like to call this Sonny versus Sonny. Okay, if you know anything, I always talk about the Godfather move Godfather one with Sonny. I always call Kane as Sonny. He has a temper, and his temper is gonna be his downfall. Just watch and see. Just like Sonny and Godfather. So this drug dealer guy, I forgot his name, whatever they call him, but he ain't nothing but another Sonny. He's just an older version of Kane. That's all he is. This guy is hot. This guy right here, he's hot-tempered and ill-advised. He makes these moves and these emotional, hot-tempered moves just like Kane. So I call this the Battle of the Sonnies. This is Sonny versus Sonny right here. That's all this is, Kane versus Zion. Sonny versus Sonny. Okay. Kane now uh 
Sunday, Zion got caught cheating because somebody snuck him some brass knuckles. And Dougie Fresh came in there and disqualified uh, Zion. And Kane won. And I guess Kane uh, got what he wanted. He, you know, Kane, I'm going to have to call, you know, Kane, he done met, he met Norma. And now he the bit one of the biggest simps. He the biggest simp on the show, man. He didn't got some of that Norma cooch, and he became the biggest simp of the show, which is gonna be interesting because uh, there's somebody else that got some of that Norma cooch this episode, and I wonder if he gonna turn into a simp. But we'll I I get on that in a minute. But anyway, he won. Kane won the battle and uh, won the fight, and he impressed Norma, and now. He went out, walked off simping with Norma, you know, and all that, you know. And, uh, you know, and, uh, this Diana, so, you know, Diana meets up with Tariq. And Diana says that she's ready to, you know, she's going to have the baby and all this and that. And she claims she's ready to reclaim she's ready. And we'll see where that goes. And like I said a minute ago, I told you, I called it with Davis. I told y'all Davis, Davis was going to smash Norma in the next episode. I called it. You got to look. You gotta give me my props. I know. I know. You gotta give me my props on that. I called that. I said, go check my last video in episode four. I said Davis is gonna smash that uh within the next two two to one episodes. I said he gonna smash within the next two episodes, but I say the next episode he gonna smash. And I be doggone. I was right. Davis smashed that. And Norma looked like she enjoyed it. So Kane better watch yourself with all that simp and stuff. So, but let's see if Davis turn into a simp like Kane after he smashed. That's going to be interesting to see if Davis do that. You know, but I called that though. But look. Michael Ely, bro. Detective Dunn. Let's get on Detective Dunn. Detective Dunn crazy, bro. Did you see him when he left out his house? Detective Dunn got some Norman Bates type stuff going on. He walked out the house talking to his deceased wife. He talking to his wife like she alive. I want to know what the like is she is there a skeleton? Does he have his wife's skeleton in a basement in a rock sitting in a rocking chair? And like, do you can you go over like if you go over his house, uh? If you just go show up randomly to uh, Doc, Detective Doug's house, will you find him like dressed up as his wife, pretending to be his wife? Like uh, Detective Doug is really giving me Norman Bates type energy. Honestly, Norman Bates. If you don't understand Norman Bates, go look up Psycho. Norman Bates. If you know, you know. And but what I don't like about Detective Doug, what I don't like about him, is I don't like. This whole little thing he got going with the uh, with the where he trying to control the criminals and stuff, like he got this thing going where I don't care if y'all kill each other, but you kill it. Like he got some type of rules in place that you gotta follow. And my personal opinion, cops like him, they think that they keeping the order in the streets, and they in their mind they got they try to justify their criminal activity. But he's a bigger criminal than the drug dealers out there because he's taking a 30% cut. So I hate when cops do that kind of stuff. And we know, I mean, I just got to, I know that Detective Dunn is going to meet a, is going to have a demise. He's going to meet his, his, uh, his demise. I just ain't figured out if it's going to be the Detective Tate going to come in or if Tariq going to do it or what. But Detective Dunn, He's too cocky. He think he's got it all figured out. And that little white woman detective he got, that she in every other word, she like, yeah, yeah. And Mary J. Blige told her, bitch, shut up. I was so glad Mary J. Blige told her to shut up. That little white cop woman, she like, yeah, yeah. Everything he's everything detective done said, she like, hey, yeah, yeah. 
I was like, you don't shut the hell up, woman. My God. Shut somebody shut her up, please. And uh the last scene we got is Tariq. He not Tariq trying to be dad of the year now. He at the ultrasound with Diana. And to me, that was weird because he went on this whole little speech about how he want to be there for Diana and protect Diana and the baby. That's why he needs to be on top of the crime world and all that. I know that she claims she got a baby by you, but we can't trust nothing. That, first of all, we can't trust nothing. I don't know why Tariq believe her. You can't. Tariq better get a blood test because that might be Salem the Simp baby. Okay? But we can't. Diana is a liar. Just like her mama. She's a liar. You can't believe nothing Diana say, but she got that cute little face and she put that cute little puppy dog look on her face and Diana gets them every time. But it's just weird to me how Tariq, this woman tried to get your mama killed and now you want to put your life on the line, protect her because she say she got a baby by you. Okay. And we don't know if Salem the Simp is, uh, Saline the Simp is dead yet either. Now, you know how power do. So keep in mind, Salem the Simp, he's, he might still be alive with his simp ass. But it's just weird to me how Tariq all of a sudden wants to protect her. But she say, hey, I ain't with that drug life. Now, I give her props for that. She say she don't want to bring her kid up around there. And I give her props for that. But we on the mid-season finale. I guess that means we only got five episodes left of this show, right? But don't worry. They're going to have another spinoff or something come up out of that's going to be more cheaper. A cheaper show to run. But anyway, I digress. Make sure you like, hit the like button. Make sure you share this with a friend. Make sure you subscribe. Until next time.